When the man who intelligence agencies blame for all the big terror attacks, many of them from Mumbai train blast to Hyderabad to Delhi blast, Indian Mujahideen's Yaskin Bhatkal is captured very soon after the arrest of Lashkar operative Abdul Karim Tunda. Is it right for the government to take credit? The NDA has always called the UPA soft on terror. But has that image changed with these recent events? And also the hanging of Abzal Guru and Ajmal Kasab? On Agenda today, we'll look at these issues and also how politics gets embroiled in tackling terror. We have our pundits and in studio we have an audience, a sampling of those under 35 who will comprise a majority of voters going into 2014. They'll be directing their questions to our two pundits. In fact, we have two home secretaries. They'll be taking various positions. We have R.K. Singh, former Home Secretary, and another former Home Secretary, G.K. Pillai, who's taking a contrarian position on this. But before we go to our pundits, I look at how the UPA fares while tackling terror. Yasin Bhatkal and his close associate in a key Indian Mujahideen operative, Asadullah, being taken to a court in Bihar. Bhatkal's arrest is one of the many stunning success stories. It started with this one. Abu Jindal, a key figure in the 2611 Mumbai terror attack, Fasi Mohammed and Abdul Karim Tunda followed in quick succession. For the UPA government, this is sure to be an image booster. BJP has been continuously criticizing government for being soft on terrorism. I mean, this is the softness of the government. The Tunda has been arrested, Bhatkal has been arrested, a lot many other attempts have been filed. Now I think they should apologize to the nation and to the government. But just how do the NDA and the UPA figure when it comes to fighting terror? According to figures, between 2006 and 2008, over 700 people were killed in terror attacks outside Jammu and Kashmir and the troubled northeastern states. The 700 include the 180 odd passengers who were killed in the Mumbai train bombings and the another 187 odd people killed during the 2611 Mumbai terror attack. The figure of 700 also include the victims of Hindu terror. In contrast, between 2001 and 2003, only 103 people were killed in Heartland, India. Well, so these reports showed the politicians are already talking about it. The UPA is saying that, look, this uh, criticism of them has been completely untrue. But let's just ask the people who actually handle terror. The uh, two home secretaries who are our pundits today. If I can start uh, with you, Mr. Arke Singh, we'll first take our first talking point. Is the UPA government tougher on terror than others? It certainly is something to think about with the current events that we've seen. Also, uh, after a long time, the president has cleared all mercy petitions. There's nothing pending. So would you agree with that? Uh, you know, comparing governments uh, on this uh, is rather difficult because uh, in my experience, I never had any occasion where there was any interference on political grounds insofar as handling terror went. So therefore, to say that one uh, government was tougher or less tougher than the other, I, th I think it's, uh, I, I, we just don't have the, uh, data, uh, we just don't have any material uh, with which to judge. I was Joint Secretary in the Ministry of Home Affairs uh, when, uh, uh, the BJP, uh, when the other government, India government was there. That is between 2000 to 2005. And I was secretary in the Ministry of Home Affairs uh, when this government was there. And uh, I didn't see any interference, I mean, either way, uh, in handling terror. Do so you basically, think the government stuff, whether we have succeeded or not succeeded is something which I think needs to be uh, judged from the point of view of the performance of the agencies themselves, except one factor. And that factor is while dealing with the external dimension. Now there is uh, something where we have always been of the view, I mean I, I have always been of the view that I think our uh, stand on this in so far as dealing with uh, external factors are concerned needs to be tougher. That is something which I have always held. Okay. Uh, Mr. G.K. Pillai, when I spoke with you earlier, you felt that no, it's wrong to say that UPA is tough on terror. Why do you believe so, sir? See, I think the, there is no doubt that I agree with Mr. R.K. Singh that uh, you know the, there is no 
interference with the uh, administration as such. But the, but the clear signal going out is that there is confusion at the highest levels in how to handle the situation. Could you give us an instance of that? And I would put it, I'll give you, I'll, I'll give you just a couple of instances. Look at the case of David Hadley itself. You had this person who was responsible for the 26 by 11 blast and the, the US government, we were not, we did not put enough pressure on the US government to have him extradited for his role in the Bombay blast. It was a fight accompli that the US government uh, did by saying that they've already given him uh, an assurance that he would not be extradited and then we got only limited access to him. In fact, the directors of the FBI, the NSA and so on of the United States had promised us in the Home Ministry that David Hadley would be put away for at least 100 or 200 years and finally he got 35 years and he possibly will get away, he'll be out on bail in a few, few more years.